I spent two really great mornings um, with Dr. Ian Lipkin up at Columbia University at his lab. Um, uh, studying virology and microbiology and um, they had me do these extraordinary experiments with pigs brains and encephalitis and um, growing things and coding things and finding out s sequences, DNA sequences and all this stuff which I understood the tiny fraction of at the time and now I know nothing. But um, that was really amazing and then Ian was also around when we were filming so um, I actually didn't come up with anything I said. They, they, they very much gave it to me. And it's all absolutely what, uh, what would be said in the situations that that character was in if she was dealing with that information. So. It's really plausible, and um, they do say that it's just a matter of time, because of course there have always been pandemics, and it's been quite a while now since there has been. Um, it may be more people. No, I actually have more. I feel I have so much faith in the science behind it all, and in the people who are out there now. So I um, I feel pretty safe. I, I worry about our farming methods and things like that that I think make all of this more more likely, um, and the use of antibiotics in factory farming and all that, I think that scares me. But um, no, the scientists I have faith in, and I wash my hands more often now. It was wonderful working with him. Um, I mean, he's iconic in several ways, and to be able to just sit next to somebody uh, in between in between shots and hear them tell stories about Apocalypse Now was um, absolutely extraordinary and uh, and really cool and he's wonderful and he's a gentleman and uh, a very unaffected one. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. I mean, he's just, I've admired him for, I mean, when I saw Sex, Lies, and Videotapes when I was 20, it, it blew my mind. And um, his uh, intelligence and his um, absolute, he just is, he's absolutely sure of what he wants, but at the same time, he is using whatever is around him, the environment around him and the actors around him, and he's using the information he's gathering when he looks around and he's so still in his brain, you just, he's all brain, kind of just churning around in there. And um, he just does everything with the minimum. I mean, everything's sort of minimalist, but everything's this minimum of fuss. He just absolutely just like a shark kind of moves through and just tells the story. And he was there on a, a wheelchair. There's a shot of where my character's walking to see um, somebody in a hospital. And uh, he was there with the camera uh, crouched on top of a wheelchair, you know, and there's no show about it. Like sometimes you might work with somebody who would kind of, for him, it's just that's the most practical way. It's more practical than using a dolly. You just get on the wheelchair, it's here, and there we go.